Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that episode. My name is Ryan McGee. I am a television critic for the AV Club and HitFix.com. This is a sincere pleasure for me, uh, not to only be in the Alamo Draft House, but to talk with, uh, talk with you about one of the great uh, gone too soon shows of the past decade. Uh, it doesn't get the credit it deserves, doesn't get all the copy it deserves, but hopefully we can fix a little bit of that today. Before we introduce our panel, and it's a great panel, I believe we have a video from somebody who, from the cast who wanted to be here, but couldn't actually make it in person, but still wanted to send out a message uh, to all of you. So if we have that clip, we can play that, and then we can get the, uh, the panel itself started. Um, so hello, everyone, uh, wherever you are, somewhere in America. Um, uh, this is about talking about the riches, and I'd like to say it was, uh, it was a wonderful series to do. I was very pleased to have very pleased to be involved with Dimitri from very early on, um, and uh, it was just such a interesting. It's not. I was going to say roller coaster ride, but it wasn't quite a roller coaster ride. It was just. It just. We just floated forwards and into and doing the, the, the whole pitches, the pitches for around different uh, TV companies to try and get the series made. Um, we just kept going forwards and that was kind of amazing because I wasn't expecting it to happen quite like that I expected I expected a lot of falling at different fences but um, so we only did two seasons and maybe this is the classic place where great TV series have to stop after two series if uh, two seasons if they're just too different or too good or too people always had this problem the idea that a family could take over a house but we just had these, these hellish stories. What's that one with three women being held in a bloody house? You know, so hellish stories go on. And, and there was one at the same time that everyone was talking to. Uh, you know, people would come back and say, oh, I don't know if this is quite believable that you could have people like who we were coming in and uh, uh, the Malloys taking over this fat from this family. And, and, you know, we weren't the same family. So th some people found that difficult to believe, but it's happening. It's happening all the time. <laughs> Only in America, not around the world, just in America. <laughs> Austria and around the world. <laughs> America. It probably, yes, it's unfortunate. It shouldn't be. It's not even a laughing matter. It's a hellish matter. Our story was a little better. We only killed people who, um, who were already dead, I think. So we didn't actually kill them. We just pushed them into swamps, if you remember, if anyone was been following. So I keep meeting people. I have met Samuel uh, Sam Jackson in a, in a lift, in an elevator, as you'd say, who said, hey, what was that? what's happened to your kid? You know, he was wondering what happened to Cal after the end of that. Um, the last episode, and so we've left people in the lurch. I've already worked out what happens at the end of the seventh season, which I don't think, I think I said to me, I might have said it to Dimitri, but um, in, in my head it was what, what would have happened. But um, I don't know if we will get to that. But uh, I don't know, well, my idea was, this was my end for the seventh season. No, maybe I shouldn't say it, because it'll be out there. I'll keep it in my head. But uh, yes, so I hope you're having a good time now. I don't know if we're here watching an episode or whether you're just talking about it, or, but um, it will be with me always. And I did like when they did the logo, The Riches. It had, didn't have the, I was expecting a dollar sign on the S, but it was a, a sense of the line through the sea of riches. So that was good, nice, nice time. So it was great, great work with FX. You know, we had our tough times, we had other things we had to, you know, everyone fight through artistic arguments and all that kind of stuff. But um, it was a great series to do, and I hope you enjoy looking at it, reminiscing on it. And there's always Netflix. Ah, Netflix, because you can see it on Netflix, can't you? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Development's just come back. Mm. All right, thank you, and goodbye. Very cool. And um, with that, we're going to start our, our Q&A proper. I want to introduce first to the stage uh, the creator of this show, Dimitri Lipkin. And uh, before you knew her, Sabrina Collins on Raising Hope. Of course, she was Dee Dee Malloy on The Riches. Shannon Woodward. And uh, the man who knew his way around a hammer <laughs> in the show, uh, Dale Malloy, Todd Stashwood. Hey, so we have two mics here, apparently, for three people, but uh, we can share with Duran Capella. Um, I'll um, sign. My first question uh, for you, Dimitri, 
which came first for you? Was it the concept expressed in the pilot, you know, where we were to steal the American dream, or was it the subculture of the Irish travelers that enticed you first and you sort of worked a concept into that? Um, that scene was actually really, really late in the game. The scene, well, like the scene, to put it in, but in the pilot where they formulate the kind of premise of the show, the steal the American dream. Uh, that came really late. I mean, I wanted to do something like that, but, the, you know, I think we actually reshot that. Scene. Yeah, it was a reshoot. Yeah. I mean, but there was a scene that was kind of like it before. Yeah. That yeah. line just came. Yeah. Out. But I was, I wanted to do, actually, it's funny, originally I wanted to do a show about uh, a girl who was like, wanted to go straight, but she was in a criminal family. So it started, really started with you. Started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to do a show about, you know, criminals, and then um, just, you know, talking with, with my wife about it, we kind of developed the idea. We thought, um, wow, this is, a, this is a great way to marry sort of um, this very strange culture about, which nobody really knows anything about, with, you know, with crime and with kind of assumed method, assumed identity, and just thought it, it seemed like a really, uh, I don't know, a very interesting idea. I've never been done. What about the, these two actors uh, made them perfect for the roles that you uh, chose them for? Um, well, they're, they're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice of words. <laughs> uh, well, you know, actually Todd, Todd is the only one who came into it who actually was with, uh, at once very scary and very funny. Uh, and it, 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 I was actually I was actually a recast. Yeah, you're you're a recast. Yeah, we cast. We we ended up reshooting about I think forty percent of the pilot because it's totally it's a very hard show to get right because you're you got you have people you know slapping each other around and you got and you have this kind of a fun confection kind of a story where you deal with cons and you have to kind of you know you, you need to have in a show like that kind of a short a light shorthand for cons because cons are really hard to. It's funny because just like a couple months ago, uh, we got a new post-production supervisor on Raising Hope, like this yeah. year, and I guess he was who did post-production on the pilot, the original pilot, before we shot it. And he like the day he started on the show, like he came and he was like, "Hey, you know, so I uh, actually did the pilot for The Riches." I was like, "Like the first one?" And he was like, "Yeah." He's like, "I have a copy of the original pilot if you want to oh, see wow. it." And I was like, "I would actually love to see yeah. that." Yeah, but he it's never so saw long. It, right? Well, I did one time at Eddie's house, like. Right. Before we did the reshoot, he showed it to me, and um, and it was crazy because I didn't remember it. But it was tonally just it was just a lot darker. We kind of a went lot. back and did like, but it was I really liked it so much. Like, yeah. but it was yeah, it was really different. But I just hadn't seen it until like just a few months ago. Yeah, wow. And I looked twelve. <laughs> Good. Tom, you played one of three nefarious characters in your career, at least there. Oh my god, <laughs> at least there. Um, yeah, I'm always being either shot or cuffed. <laughs> what, what are some of the keys of taking, you know, a, a normally an antagonist role and sort of imbuing it with that third dimension that a lot of shows don't quite give to their characters? Um, well, I, I, I always goes back to to the writing and and they, you, a character like Dale doesn't think of himself as a villain, like he he thinks of himself as wrong, like he had kind of was promised certain things in as a traveler prince, essentially. And all of that gets taken away. So that is something I think everybody can connect to, is, is this feeling of, of, I'm owed something. Uh, I've been wrong. Somebody else is getting something I'm, I, was, I was promised. My favorite, there's an anecdote, and it, it is a testament to, to their writing. And if you saw the show, there's a scene where I'm walking uh, having this like two-page monologue is one of those where you're reading going, there's no way I'll be able to do this. So I'm carrying my father through the forest and I leave him to suffocate uh, while I'm weeping over his body, giving this tale of when we went camping. And it was this amazing dichotomy of horror, like a horrible act. And the, the oddest response I ever got to it, and again, going back to what they balanced in that scene was somebody goes, some, somebody on the internet said, I felt so bad for you when you were killing your dad. <laughs> and, and that is the show. Like, that is exactly what they did and how they were able to kind of balance those two things at the same time, this pathos for this horrible man who kills people with hammers. But then even after that, it was like, I didn't mean to. I hit him too many times. Um, 
but at the same time, you, yeah, you feel bad for him, yet he's also deplorable. So uh, how do I find that stuff? You just kind of lean on the text. And if, if it's in the writing, you you try to play both things that are already there. You know? In terms of the balance, Shane, your, your character is very much both between her brothers and also very much between her parents. How did you play that balance in terms of sympathy, uh, who you were aligning with, who you were sort of trying to follow, and who you were trying to help as the show uh, progressed? I mean, I think it was always kind of, it was very there in the pilot, like from the beginning, that like Dee Dee really like worshipped her father and like really resented her mother for not being there and like for being kind of a mess. And I think that's like, I mean, to be fair, like something that like, you know, not to be too personal, but you know, I, I have like very similar, like I'm, I'm that archetype, you know, and like, Funnily, like, I remember reading the script the first time. I was, like, the first person that read for Dee Dee. I was literally the first person, and, like, we used to joke about it. Um, and I did not and we, remember, like, remember He didn't remember me, but, like, the casting director was, like, an acquaintance of mine, and she called me and was, like, gave me all these notes. She's like, you are the person. Like, there's no other girl. Like, because yeah. I just so am that girl. Like, I was, bo- like, I, I never remember... That, sh- that show I loved so much because I never had to do any work. Like, I was so proud of like what I was doing there and was learning so much from everyone, but like, I was still so young that I was just playing a kid and like living out my like teenager that like I kind of didn't get. It, like, by like, you know, loving my father and getting angry with my mother. And um, anyway, I ended up coming back in like two months later and reading, and they were like, Where have you been? And I was exactly. like, I was 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 so glad. <laughs> I can't say the same about Dale. <laughs> 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 nothing like it. <laughs> um, we saw the, the intro there from, from Eddie from, from afar there. I want to talk about sort of his energy, because this is sort of a breakout role in terms of what people understood about him. He wasn't that famous around the States, but what he was known for was a stand-up act. Yeah. It's very much a dramatic role, but at times, that stand-up persona seems to sort of peek out. So how much of that, how much improv was sort of done on the set? I mean, it's a rig- rigorously plotted show, but in terms of the dynamics, how maybe Shannon uh, taught you guys to play against Eddie in some of the scenes that you were uh, had to do something. Maybe there's an improv involved. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I I think I think that's that was actually a big part of the reshoot that we needed to do because you know Eddie has got such a distinct energy and Minnie had a very very different energy. So so that the show it, it was it really felt like two different shows and we we had to find a way to. Um, just, just let let them allow them to have their different energies, but to just bridge, you know, bridge that gap a little bit more. So, so that it um, part of it was allowing for Eddie to have his moments, you know, and you know, some of it was scripted, and, and then some of it not. And I, I literally don't remember what what he did. What was, yeah, what was, yeah, it's weird. I mean, it was. I remember like especially towards the end because there was there was a bit especially a lot of the second season like three episodes where it was during the writer's strike like yeah. they wrote as much as they could and then they couldn't be on set that like I remember in, yeah. I mean when the reshoot was like we would shoot scripted and then we would do like after we finished that we would do like a take where Eddie would improvise and we would just kind of go with whatever he yeah. was doing and we got kind of like stuck to the scene but then he would like make jokes and we would kind of like go with it and especially like in like the last three episodes too, like there was definitely a lot yeah, of that because yeah. we didn't have them. Like what was so great about this show too is that like you know we would shoot, and then we'd be like, well this feels weird. And Dimitri, you know, or Don and Nicole or whoever was there were, you know, they would be like, okay, we'll try this. And so the writers were writing for us on the spot. Like we only had seven days to shoot, which was it was a very short amount of time usually yeah. for a drama like this. So. Without them, it became like, it was like, well, we'll shoot what's scripted and then I guess try. Like, it was really strange to do that. It was, yeah, it was, it it must was have been hard. hard on the you. last four episodes of the second season were yeah. all shot. Without, With a, without, without writers present. Literally, present. We, it was, it was crazy. like, right after the writer's strike, we, we got, all got together in a um, little uh, like office and we watched all the episodes that were filmed. Shot without them there, which was so strange. That's interesting, huh? Like, huh that's okay. not what I wrote. <laughs> uh, no, not when they aired, but, but, yeah, but like we only had, I literally, I remember I had like five days with the last episode in the editing room. That's the only bit of influence I had over like most of the season. Two so in season two, you kind of finally came more around into the central fold. You're around even falls a little bit at the end of season one. Yeah. Really, not really acting with the family so much. I feel like. You were like coming home, you are more part of the show at that I point? I think they were back over. Yeah, they, um, 
it was a an interesting uh, th between the. They, I think they just found, and then they found a greater villain that we didn't really ultimately get to explore too much with Tierra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they 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 sort of had to then shift. Dale, they repurposed him in a way that made him complicit. So now we were kind of un, un, un unholy alliance between him and I, uh, which was really interesting and a lot of a lot of risk for storytelling that we we never got to. But uh, <laughs> And when they created this greater evil with, with him and putting me in Panko with him, uh, it did come, and one of my favorite episodes was, was a scene with uh, Toby uh, Huss was yeah. with, at the hotel where, yeah. where, where uh, Eddie, myself, and Sam, Aiden, were running a con against him right. and watching Eddie kind of step back into old traveler ways and us having to rely on our old tricks together right. Because uh, essentially, he and I grew up together as, yeah. as pseudo brothers almost. Yeah. Um, those were some of my favorite stuff because we, I wasn't just sort of going at him with a hammer. I, I actually, we were doing our thing, and, and, and I think I had to play drunk at one time. Right. And yeah. It was a really yeah. fun, and, and, and the, ideally, we would have seen more of that. And then putting him in Panko, it, it put him on the side of the Malloys because they had to unify towards a, a bigger enemy. It was me. I'm going to turn over the questions to the audience just one second, but you mentioned you know you were a Panko Man in season two. And there's this idea that Eden Falls almost infects isn't the right word, but it just it sort of chemically changes all the travels that sort of come to it, the way that the characters were wrestling yeah, we tried to cool with, with identity and the ways that they were changing in ways that maybe they weren't even aware of. So how hard was yeah. it to sort of play that transition without being too broad? Uh, it was really hard. It was very hard. Because it's like, it, it, in, in a way, it, I think the show works best as, a, as almost like a, a fairy tale where, where things happen where we, we have to let go of reality a little bit. Because cons are so, cons are so sort of rooted in what you think of other people might do. So you have to, you almost need a bit of a shorthand to, to do that and to do that and, and to plot around. But, but yeah, that was really hard to do. It was, it was hard to um, move story forward. And keep it, yeah. keep it believable really within really the realms good. of the mythology of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was really hard. I, yeah, I think I would have slowed things down a bit. Right. I, 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 that's, 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 <laughs> that's, 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 all right, you guys watched the episode, you watched the series before. If there are any questions, you just raise your hand. I'll try to point to you, and uh, we can you can ask anybody here. I'll just keep asking questions. If not, I have plenty. <laughs> I really want to, as many questions for you guys as you want. For now, you mentioned sort of the, 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 the stakes in mythology. I mean, the ways that the episodes built upon themselves. It was like pushing them in the corner, pushing them in the corner, and then sort of deeper, deeper corner. What about the sustainability of that type of? Because now the idea of a closed-run TV series is sort of more popular in the lexicon. But at the time, I mean, television wants to run forever. So how is how how far how long did you see the show going in an ideal sense? Well, I, I, I did not, that's my first show, right? You know, I was learning as I went. Uh, I think that it, it could have run for about four seasons, probably. Uh, I, I, I think I, what I, what I this part of the reason why I really wanted to sort of see this episode, I like the, you know, I think this is probably just did, you know, brilliantly, this idea of like this very fairly serialized show that had nevertheless as its sort of a story something that was thematically complete and, 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 and said something about the world and then and, 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 you know, but yet kept the overall story slightly, you know, at a slower pace. And I wish I'd done that a little bit more, you know, because I think I I, I, I I I'm like realizing that the the pace of the story, I'm, I'm actually less interested in the pace of the story than I am in the, the just the little things that, that happen, that would happen with them, you know? Uh, and, and as a way of commenting in, in a hopefully unique way on our life. Well, I had a spin-off yeah. half-hour sitcom in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-camera set, it was gonna be good. <laughs> the home improvement show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have the lights in my eyes. You're raising your hand, I can't see you. <laughs> there we go, right there in the middle. Yes. Yay. Well, we lament the end 
of the riches, but now moving forward, can you tell us all your, everyone's current projects? Uh, well, I, after that, I did uh, Hung on HBO. So that, that uh, ended last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I did that for three seasons. And then now I'm, I have a, sh uh, my wife and I have a show at Showtime, which I'm actually getting more into genre stuff. Uh, so it's kind of a genre piece for non-genre people. That's what, that's what I said. <laughs> so it's not, it's not, you know, tech based, but it's, you know, like I think we're just interested in, it's about, well, it's easy. I won't, I won't say too much about it, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's just, it, it ways of playing around with social with the uh, stru structures in, in a non-realistic way, in a kind of a speculative way. So it's, it's a it's a speculative fiction. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a show time and I have a couple of other things, but that's the main. Uh, I'm still doing raising hope. We're doing another year, um, and. Uh, <laughs> comedy right now for Universal by the guys that wrote like old school and the hangover and stuff. It's like the super bad of hangover movies. It's like new, like like a few like new like comedians, these three guys that are like so funny. They're like such movie stars. These kids, uh, Adam Pally was on Happy Endings and TJ Miller and this other kid Thomas Middle Ditch. Anyway, we're shooting that blowing stuff up in the desert and like they're telling jokes and I just look really like what? What's going on? <laughs> so I'm doing that and then the show again. Um I, uh, writing side, I have a, I have a pilot that, uh, in development at Sci-Fi, um, uh, hour-long outer space drama that I'm writing, and, uh, we'll be handing in a draft of that. Call it, it's called Clandestine, and that I would be, I wouldn't be acting on that, I'd be executive producing and writing for that. And then acting, I actually leave here Sunday to fly to Santa Fe, I'm doing a Western film called Jane Got a Gun with uh, Natalie Portman and Ewan McGregor and Joel Pennington, which is why I'm hair suit. <laughs> and I get to shoot guns and ride horses and, and all that stuff. So, so busy. Yeah. Oh, and I have a comic that uh, I hawk called, uh, that I write, and it's free and it's online. It's called Devil Inside. And uh, Eddie's in it, actually, and Minnie's in it, actually. Uh, they, uh, I'm I, 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 you will be <laughs> after today and three margaritas. She's going to be in it. Um, and that uh, we've been taking a Comic Con for the last three years, and uh, we've been in talks uh, with with possible web series stuff with it. And so just between acting and writing, that's what's filling my day. And I have two children, so I never sleep. <laughs> Good time. Oh, unfortunately, one more question here. Oh, right there, in the front. Um, I was just wondering, uh, this is the beginning of season two of The Riches. Um, it seemed that Wayne and Dale were in kind of like their universe, and then the rest of the family was separated. And I was wondering if that was a storyline or a character thing that you wanted to explore, or if it was something more esoteric, like a schedule conflict. No, it, wasn't, it was not a, uh, no, not a schedule conflict, no. Uh, we wanted to do, because, uh, you know, like they, they were leaving, so we wanted to do like this kind of, we'd take it on the road. Uh, we were a little um, hamstrung by you know, in, in production production. You have like the the on set days and the out of set days. And so yeah, we, we were sort of for a show about travelers. We were like stuck on our sets for like four out of seven days. We couldn't leave. It was too expensive. So we're like in second season, we're like fuck it. We're like we're gonna just put them on the road and they're gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it was also a way of like see things outside of the living. I also introduce new dynamics. Yeah. Well, thanks to uh, Dimitri, Shannon, and Tom for all your insight there. Thank you for coming out. Hope you enjoy the rest of the festival. <laughs>